Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi, Untold Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys is brought to you in partnership with MasterCard. Together, let's start something priceless. And Sagicor. From home sweet home to LED. From boombox to Bluetooth. From rotary dial phone to smartphone. Sagicor has been here through it all. From old roads to highways. From your first child to grandchild. We've been helping you achieve your goals, secure your future, protect your loved ones, and put a smile on your face. Sajigor, standing with you for 50 strong years. Use your MasterCard contactless, a fast, easy, and secure way to pay, so you can spend more time with those you love. Because creating extraordinary moments is essential. Together, let's start something priceless. One of our most decorated artists to fly the Jamaican flag. When I say award-winning, when I say global, when I say decades of just... Ah, listen, Adotie Sean Paul. SP. Sean hey. Paul. Somebody give it. <laughs> Hi. What's up? How are you? Very good. It is so nice to see you. Yeah. Sh shall I yeah. tell the people about the voice note you sent me about yeah, um, coming them, out of your house? I'm doing... not shy of that. I know I am, I've been scared <laughs> for a minute. Oh, in man. In the early. Yeah. So tell them. Tell them what he said? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me just get, tell my editor right now. Just get your bloops ready. <laughs> Sean said, Yendi, you know, say, I don't know. <laughs> um, but. Yes, this is what is happening in the world around us, but you've created some major magic despite what's going on around this us. Time. Yeah. With the help of a few friends. A few? Yeah. A, like laundry <laughs> list long. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about what's going on. Life and living. Uh, it came about because uh, you know the pandemic hit. I wasn't able to tour. Yeah. Uh, I got a lot more time in studio and with family, which both of those things, I try to look at the positive in every situation. Mm -hmm. And both of those things were like amazing to me. Yeah. I've been trying to put together something like this as an album for a while. And so this gave me the opportunity to do it. But yeah, the first five months I was kind of out of commission and that's, those were the voice notes she talking about. <laughs> I was like, I ain't going nowhere when yeah. I left my yard. And then so the term live and living came about after like about June when I was like, or, or July when I was like, yo, I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. I'm still living. Mm -hmm. I have, I have to give thanks, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, go do what me for do. Cause if you lose your saltiness, you use just dirt, no? Ah, uh, ooh, so, yeah, a so, so So I did kind of want to be, you know, may, have use. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, we go to the studio and see what me I do with them. I had a few singles I wanted to put out and then it just kind of started to turn into I don't just put out an album with everybody on it. That would be cool. And it's not just anybody on it. It's lone Yeah, they done them. <laughs> Yo! I mean, yeah. you went heavy. Yeah, man. People, people are friends in the biz sometimes that you, you wouldn't really see in, in yes. public. So sometimes like they don't see me and you know, who could be left side mm -hmm. all the time out or, or even Suko from War 21. Yeah. But both of those people are, helped me out with my productions, especially Suko. He mm -hmm. has mixed probably most of my projects that I've ever put out. Yeah. So and when I tell people that, they're like, I mean, it's like, whoa, I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah. So, you know, um, if you check the album, I have people who are artists, engineers and producers roll up all in our one. So that's like Suko. Artist, engineer, producer, yeah. um, left side, artist, engineer, engineer producer, producer. Uh, people like Sarani, artist, artist engineer, engineer, producer. <laughs> uh, even people making tracks on the album like DeMarco, artist, engineer, producer. Right. So these people who I revere, everybody on there have a great deal of talent to me and um, just wanted to work for the longest time. And 
you know, a lot of times I, I'm in talks with like the bigger players in mm -hmm. the game, like, and, you know, Buja and, and, and Shaggy and yeah. even Gang and, and Junior Gang. And they're always like, see the Time Sila. Sila. Yeah, <laughs> Sila. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, you know, they're always like, yo, we should do more in the genre and, and collab together and tour mm -hmm. together. I think that's just why you have Jamra Cruise right. right now. Right. Uh, li live and living because uh, that's something that he conceptualized. Gang, I mean, and, and, and from our conversations, it kind of inspired me. Mm. I was like, yeah, we need to do more collabs. And that's what I, I said I was doing, just putting out a few singles, but yeah. then it turned, it turned into, this, into yeah, this monster. It's <laughs> more than a monster. <laughs> but you know, you, you, it's funny because as you were chatting a while ago, you were talking about wanting to have youth. And I'm looking at you and I'm not like, oh, I look at you sideways because I'm like, <laughs> youth, first of all, make could just run down your resume right quick. Um, Actually, I'm going to go way back on this. I'm going to go back to when I was in college. Ooh. And Give Me the Light was the banger. The bang and when I say, you know, when people know, say so you're from Jamaica too, and they're like, yo, Sean Paul? <laughs> and they're like, yo, what is he saying? Yo, what is he? And I'm like, oh, let, me just, yeah, let me just yeah. run it through. But fun and joke aside, Sean, you've been doing this for a minute. Like, yeah. the longevity you've had is not typical. Mm -hmm. Because you've also had a steady at the top of the game for a while. True. Yeah. I have to give thanks to the fans at first, the people who do rate my music, yeah. or else I'd just be a bathroom singer like so many people <laughs> are. And are talented doing it, no, honestly. There's people who just want to karaoke, you know. There's yeah. people who just want to like feel that vibe right there at a little, and they can sing like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, there's people who just want to write songs for other people. So it could have been that for me. Yeah. Uh, but I got a taste of the, the vibes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and as I say, I've put you on this album and he's a hero to me. I was 19 mm. years old in the crowd looking up at this dude saying, yo, I him sing them junior. That like a skinny boy. Where was that? <laughs> uh, way back, 94. Wow. Before that, that was, I was probably 21 by then. But yeah. yeah. So tell him my age right now. No, no, but you're not. Aren't you 25? I'm 40 great. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm happy to say so. That's right. I've been through enough years and enough tears and enough sweat and blood too. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't take about anything. Hmm. I mean, nothing. Walk me through where this thing started for you. Wanting to... All right, well, loving music as a kid. Yeah. Uh, my mom used to play the Beatles records and yes. Paul Simon, them and, you know, all the latest stuff that's going on in Jamaica. You would know from radio. Hearing on the car, car rides, you know, uh, Dennis Brown, you knew Bob Marley's songs, mm -hmm. of course. Um, Jimmy Cliff and, and all the greats. So then my aunt had a sound system, which is Sparkles Disco. Oh my gosh. So Sparkles is more oriented right now to, to uh, soca music. Right. And, and, and people kind of check it out as what you call like a carnival sound and right. uh, associate with a with a kind of a song, but back in the day, she used to have parties at my house. Ah. So me and my brother and my cousin used to be the box boy them. We used to set up the box and set up the bar and make sure, say, all right, if the bar was here, then, you know, we used to conceptualize those things. So it was kind of, that was at age 10 and 12. Wow. How much liquor you teach you for when you set up the bar? <laughs> uh, there was a Budweiser party <laughs> once that was sponsored. And that's the first time, it was 1986, and Budweiser <laughs> coming to Jamaica. And, yeah, man, we went at it. <laughs> we were young, but, you know, we couldn't manage much. And Budweiser is not a harsh drink. Yeah. And I'm not endorsing any kids to go drinking or <laughs> no, no thing. But I'm just telling you the story of what I <laughs> happened to me. What had happened was. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it was cans. And that was interesting because I didn't have to have a bottle open. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, <laughs> whoops. And I was like, whoa. So, yeah, those times. Um, it was good. I, you know, we would set up the parties and then. I'd stay and watch people come. Yeah. And I'd go, go you know, back inside about 12 o'clock and the music would be banging till four. So, you know, uh, it, it was a good little vibes. Uh, and then about probably age 14, 15, I started to, to think that I would be a producer. I'd seen Steely and Cleavy on TV. Yeah. And I saw them telling you how computer programs are running now and they have all the sound them in there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, mom. I think that's where I want to be. And she's like, no, you, you need to go to lessons. And so she sent me to lessons. I went to a, a lady named 
uh, Mrs. Burger. Big up Mrs. Burger. <laughs> she taught me, she taught me some great stuff, but then when the math part of the, the quarter notes thing dropping and I had to do math, I was like, I don't want, I thought <laughs> it was just like, you know, and play by ear thing. So yeah. I kind of started to, to not go so much, or you would call it sculling maybe. <laughs> <laughs> especially when, music class. Especially when one day I was left there on my birthday till way in the night. Something happened in the personal, in the family, and oh, man. I wasn't able to, so I was like, damn. So I didn't, I didn't like it, and I, yeah. and I, and I begged mom, say, yo, there's a keyboard I see in the um, flea market down by the Marcus Garvey thing yeah, there yeah, on, yeah. on Sundays, the Marcus Garvey building down there in New Kingston and I see a keyboard and she was like, yeah, let me come see it. And it was a Casio keyboard and it, wow. it have a brook, it have a crack in it, yeah. right? So it was a little cheaper and I'm like, mom, yeah, that, that's my thing. And it had a Ford section drum machine, you know, and she was like, yo, all right, now, let me see what's up. And she, I think she bought it that day, but didn't tell me. And she must take the person oh, number that's so nice. and she go back and like the birthday gift. And that, oh, that that's kind of so Monday, nice. You know? So she surprised me with it now, and I'm like, whoa, and I'm, I'm building over all the latest rhythms, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, from um, like, like Steely and Cleavy rhythms, them bow and all these yeah. kind of things, and, and rhythms like, um, you know, Lord, me can't take it no more. What? <laughs> <laughs> Doom. And when and them and some them have some heavy drum yeah. pattern, you know, drum Woo! and bass, and bass. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance music. That's right. So, for a while, I was thinking I'm going to be a producer, you know, when yeah. I grow up and thing. And about age 17, I saw a bridging. I was a swim champion in school. That's right. And my bridging was a table tennis champion in school. Ah. And then I saw him doing songs with Sprague up bands and coming on stage. And I was like, yo, Dan Youth, where that come oh. from? Jason Williams. You know what yes. I mean? Um, and I was like inspired by that. And yeah. I used to kind of... Hang around with him and go to to little studios that I, I knew that he would say that he was going to be there. Or I'd help him with parties that he had. He used to be a promoter at the time as well. Right. And um, you know, I just started getting more and more into it uh, and being a fly on the wall in the studios. Mm. I've watched being in my voice where I'm probably sure he didn't really notice who I was at the time. Just right. In the background, like you know, checking him out. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, all those guys like Buja and Beanie, they're, they're my age, but I was such a junior compared to right, them. Right, So the way how they started, they, you right. know, Beanie started at an age of five and nine years old, singing on Tasty's Talent shows. That's and right. So to me, they were experienced artists and I was just watching, kind of, you know, as I said, being a sponge and Absorbing getting all everything. the things. Uh, they're watching Sly Bill Rhythm and Bulby, Bulby, the engineer, doing thing. If anybody know Bulby, <laughs> I'm of a weird dance when I'm doing thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, checking out everything uh, yeah. for years. Um, so them time there was, you know, me writing demos. Mm. And um, by that time I was going to UTEC, to the hotel management. It was called Cast at the time. I mean, I was going to say, did you go to UTEC? Because <laughs> me know you got Cast. Yeah, me I know. went to Cast. <laughs> yeah, them early years. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't a university, it was a college of art, science and technology. That's right. But, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I decided that, yo, I didn't want to just try music and then suppose it, it didn't work, out, work out for me. Yeah. So I wanted to do something, especially moms was, you know, a single mom at the time, mm. father's in prison. And I was like, yo, I have to do something. So mm. I tried to get in for architecture because I had passed t technical drawing and I thought, that, you know, TD architecture makes sense. Yeah. And they were like, you don't have the grades for that, son. <laughs> so we're going to put you in, um, in, in hospitality and food management. Right. And you can probably transfer if your grades are good. And I went into that hotel management thing and there was 80 ladies in my class. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of thing Dr. Sangsa was trying to deal with, but <laughs> I was like, I'm not moving from here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, never mind. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm learning to cook and I'm meeting a lot of nice ladies. So yeah, let's, let's all is well that. in the world. Let's just do that. And <laughs> I spent three years there while I was doing that. I was still playing water polo for the country. Yeah. I, I represented Jamaica for swimming and water polo since I was like 14. Mad. And so my day would consist of getting up, going to school, uh, going to training after that in the mm -hmm. evening. And then by about nine o'clock, with chlorine all over me, 
go into the studios and be in the fly on the wall, wow. like and writing wow. my own rhymes and that kind of wow. thing. And it took a couple of years for somebody to get a demo tape of me. My father heard it. He had come out of prison when I was 19. I was actually just going to ask you, because yeah. you said it so matter-of-factly, but I'm not going to lie. When you said it, I was kind of like, whoa, because yeah. I never knew that about your journey. Yeah. If you don't mind touching on that, because you mentioned yeah. your mom being a single mom, but what happened with your dad? Uh, he was involved in many different things. Okay. And was a wild person as a youngster. Mm -hmm. He also was a swim champion when he was a kid. Oh, wow. And my mom too. The both of them swam for Jamaica in the 60s. Mm. And by the time he started to like be 20 or so, he started to, you know, he had a nine to five and I don't think he liked it. Okay. And he started to try the hustling. Got and you. He got in trouble many times. Got you. Uh, but the last time was, you know, for 15 years, he got locked out, locked, locked down. How did that impact you? Uh, I was 13 at the time. And when you're hearing a sentence that's longer than my life, that's I was right. like, I'm never going to see that dude again. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I, I just remember a feeling of, a great feeling of loss. I was yeah. 13, yeah. looking to be, you know, to, to try to have some male influence, positive influence in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of started to look to sports people mm. and music people. I was just going to ask, you know, so, if yeah. music was a nice like, a release from the reality yeah. of all of that. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you, you go to school and people, even in prep school, he had been to, to jail and people come up to you and say, Yo, are your father in jail? Just like when you, you have your slice of pizza or your little patty in your hand and everybody have a run joke. And, yeah, yeah. And then they just come on that question and it's just like the whole cloud just mm -hmm. come back on you and you hear the balling and oh, yeah, them thing that because it's not that I, I, I felt ashamed of him. I just missed him, mm -hmm. you know, as, yes. as a son. So. Yeah, yeah uh, the last time, as I said, that was 86 that he got the 15 year sentence. Right. And so, when, you know, those years where I put myself into swimming a lot because it made me feel closer to him. Mm. And I wanted my mom to to feel that, you know, she, she had, uh, you know, raised somebody with discipline. And, and I was getting discipline from it. And I was yeah. seeing that. And I was like, yeah, you know, what? it's a good thing. Um, no, my, my mom had coached my coach and he actually wow. went to the Olympics. Wow. Big up to Andrew Phillips. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. So he... Not my cousin, if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot that. Yeah. Uh, Man uh, has two P's at the end, I'm he, just saying. He, he doesn't remind me of you in any way at all, <laughs> so I must say. You're, you're way more beautiful. <laughs> well, then, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, he was my coach for years yeah. and, and I wanted to go to the Olympics, though. So. So, you know, about age 17, a lot of my friends started to go to college. Mm. And I just, I, I didn't have any idea of what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I, everybody would say, oh, I'm going to this college and that college. And I'd be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I didn't really have, m moms didn't have it to send me That's abroad right. at the time. Yeah. Uh, even though I went to private schools out here, she made sure that her last dollar was spent for her two kids to be in a school like Hillel. Mm. Right, so people might say, "Oh, but you were in Hillel and all that." I saw her sacrifice. Right, I remember years, and I just saw it on Instagram the other day. Mm. Um, in the seventies, the shelves in the in the supermarket was empty. Right, yes. And I remember hearing stories about, you know, uptown ladies fighting over the one bag of rice mm. that they left. So I couldn't I couldn't even imagine what was happening in the inner city right. at the time. Right. And yeah, th those things. Uh, kind of, kind of. Got, if you come from the, like the seventies and them time, that you remember when there was not a lot. Right. You know in what I mean? In the middle of the brain drain and the yeah, no matter where stuff, you yeah. were in society, you, 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 there wasn't a lot. Things were hard. Yeah, there yes. was those differences um, to know, but it, there wasn't a lot in Jamaica back then. So you know what I like what you said a while ago, though, because most people, people have this thing where. When you reach a certain stage in high school, you're going to know what you want to do. And yeah. everybody's like, I was so focused and I was working hard. And, and I wasn't. And <laughs> you're just like, yo, I never knew what I wanted to do. And I, I appreciate that because everybody at 16 and 17, it don't mean that you really know what direction you're no. going in. And you kind of, you're almost made to feel wayward for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And even it, I, 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 those experiences taught me that in, later on in life, after the success of Dutty Rock and everybody's like, what are you going to do now? 
How are you mm. going to beat that? And I'm mm. like, I don't know. Yeah. The same thing. It's the same feeling. I don't know. I just want to do what I feel. And, and uh, without, without trying to take any energy from anybody. Mm -hmm. Just try mm. to do, build my own self and, and don't be negative to other people and yes. don't try to drain them energy. So that yes. was me. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's still me up to now. Um, you know, I, I, people ask me, oh, you stay out of the confrontation and bag of something, something, them on the sus and I just don't go in it. And you just don't really stay so either. No. Nah. You're not really cast cast at all. <laughs> no, 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 something there on me. Okay. I want to know, so, you're at cast, yeah. you're going to the studio, you are the fly on the wall, you're mm -hmm. listening to the people, and you're studying, and then one day you're just like, I'm going to do a demo, get me behind the mic, because I'm going to spit right quick. Wait, Watch it, this, or is, was it nothing like that? It was actually from school days in Hillel. Uh, right. the, the, the English teacher got tired of me <laughs> beating on the desk and singing over flower gun tune them and these things. <laughs> And she was like, you and you, um, there's a school play, write the school song, write the song for the school play. Brilliant, yeah. yeah so we got Mrs. Main, uh, she was <laughs> an English and English language and literature teacher. Yeah. And me and Noel Amos, big up Amos, who's still part of my camp today, he, he had um, the entire Leju sound system in his living room because Mad. he was one of their uh, protege DJs, young DJs, but right. they used to store the stuff at his house. And I would go over there uh, after school to try and, you know, make this this thing up. She gave us guidelines as to what we would say. And um, I kind of did a rap, so it, it kind of went like, uh, you think that love is a game of musical chairs, and when the music stops out, someone drops and you don't care. <laughs> love for you is a game of musical chairs. So I was following the rap style at yeah, the time. Yeah, I believe you remember it. Yeah, well, I remember them. They, those are simple rhymes. <laughs> but but it was it was cool and it was kind of following what rap was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. And, you know, uh, we did it to the, uh, on the star reach. Do, 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 do. It's all right, right. So everybody knew the rhythm. And, hey. and I, I just came and did that, that piece of lyrics. And, it was a, it was kind of like a play about you know a dude and he left the girl and whatever whatever. Sure. So, so I sang the song on a tape. We had to do it of course live on a C, on a TDK, and then we just put it and they played it at the right time. The thing and everybody was like, "Yo, that's you!" I'm like, yeah. And they're like, "Yo, you sound dope." And so <laughs> I still didn't take the 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 artist thing. I wanted to be the producer right, still. Right. Right. And then, as I said, a few years later, I saw Dan Youth. Yeah. And I was like, yo, and I got more into writing. And um, yeah, my, my first demo tape, which I did back at Amos House now, mm -hmm. a bag of conscious tune, uh, <laughs> uh, songs that had to do with, um, you know, uptown and downtown, why it stays so, mm -hmm. and, and how there's poverty in the country and we're supposed to be out of many one people. Mm. So at that time, Bujo had just kind of made the transition from being, you know, Mr. Uh, kick up rhythm, hot, hot music central. Yeah. So then he was like Mr. Till Shiloh. Right, and right. I, that was about 94 and I was like, yo, this is amazing. Like, so all of my freedom at the time was more conscious uh, Tony mm. Rebel was a big artist yes, and Garnet yes. Silk. Um, oh, they still are a big yeah, artists, but, but as, a, as a youngster, I was mm. kind of trying to make songs like that. So my father come out of prison and hear them. I was like, what? Mad. Say, yo, I know Cat Corey. He grew up in Mona with him. And he's like, I'm going to take this to him. So I made a copy of the tape and I took it to him. And he's like, yo, this man sound like Super Cat. And during my years at Woolmer's Boys School, it, there was a lot of beating on this and DJing. Right, of course, yeah, yeah. And even when I was trying to sound like my favorite DJs, Shabba Ranks and Major Worries, uh, people would look around me and say, yo, you sound like Cat. Sweet Super there. Cat. And I was like, yeah, he was kind of like my father in the business. The tone is similar. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I looked up to Cat because he was the latest man and he was also a rude <laughs> boy and he kind of had the perfect Mix mixture of, the of them thing there, and yeah, I was yeah. like, "Yeah, man, that's that's my dad in the biz. Yes. My pops that." So after after that demo tape got to Cat Core now, he was like, "Come check me at this studio up in Stone Hill." Mm -hmm. I went to the studio, and it happened to be Rupert Ben private studio, uh -huh. and Rupert was the first uh, leader of my, my first band that I had. I've had two bands since I've been 
doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so, so Rupert was like, yeah, you sound good. You sound like Cat, come through and I could DJ this tune. So that tune said, it's an alarm, they sit at the ghetto story. Read about it in the star and watch it on TV. It's an alarm, this, the ghetto story. You read it in the magazine and watch it on movie. Mama, she a ball too, she well hungry. She only have enough money to feed the picking She send Steve and John if you go find them daddy. But daddy him junk and freaky, freaky. Them off you walk on the road and beg food money. While the rich man of town are dealing US currency. It's an alarm, this, the ghetto story. So I was trying to say it like you know it's Mad. unfair you know i like yeah. <laughs> people hear it and say uh i should do it over i was but that's, just going to say that's really old oh, that's like the style was terra fabulous style bujo style Not any for refix that man <laughs> yeah the lyrics them dope yeah. so so um you know it, it had three verses and so anyway we did that and um i was being apprentice in that studio and I was like, I want to learn how to produce. And he was like, yeah, sure. The first thing you have to learn is to rope up all of these wires. <laughs> like, and there was like 20,000 wire. And I had to be like, yeah, this, the whole <laughs> Christmas. I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> so, so as an apprentice. And then one day, it so happened that uh, my boy, the Rupert's sister, mm -hmm. she's a singer and a dancer as well. Yeah, like Jana. Yeah, Jana. Yeah. She, she danced for Shaggy on tour. Right. And they had something to show him, showcase. It was her and Belinda. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are Shaggy's first two dancers. Yes. And, and, and he's like, yo, Shaggy's coming up. I'm going to play it for them. I'm like, oh, wicked. So I was wrapping up wires. <laughs> and they was over there in the other part of the, I, I didn't even see them. It was through some trees and things. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and Shaggy's manager at the time was Robert Livingston. Right. And he used to manage Super Kiat. So he was like, yo, this sound like Super Cat. You're this is right. dope. Who is this kid? So uh, they, they introduced me to, to introduced us and he was like, yo, uh, I'm going to do a test copy of this for you. I was like, wow, this is dope. So he did a test copy, which was five forty fives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave me two. I saved one, which is somewhere in some part of my memorabilia right now. Yeah. But the other one, I was like, I was so enthralled with, with Muta Baruch at the time. The conscious stuff that he was like throwing out at me every Thursday night, I was listening to Cutting Edge, right? So, wow. so um, it's like I, I knew where his bookshop was in New Kingston there. And I drove up there in my mother. They used to call it the bread van. <laughs> Dutty Cup got famous in that van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we had a long VW van. and. You know, so I used to drive around everybody in it. But I drove, this was right before Dutty Cup, and I drove to his thing. I was like, Muta here, they were like, no, I'm not open up yet, him soon come. And I waited, just underneath one of the trees, them, and, and him wow. come. And just when he was opening up this, the, the door, I walked up to him and said, This is the MasterCard Priceless Moment. Muta, I'm a young artist. Here's my single. I just want to know what you think about it. Because I want to know if I'm good enough to do this. Wow. And I'm looking on it and I'm looking at me and I say, all right, cool. And I'm going out of the studio in the bookshop. Yeah. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't want to be there. And so I just left. <laughs> right? So I was like, I don't know if he's going to like it or not. By the way, full circle moment for the people who don't know, Muta is on Sean's most recent <laughs> album. Exactly. So, there is yeah. there is a whole blow all moment very, happening right now with this yeah, yeah. story. Very very wow. Dope. So he was actually the first, like that night I went home and I'm doing studying homework and thing, and it just dawned on me like yo it's eleven o'clock yo I'm um, thinking there I start already like it, it was probably like twelve, and I ran to the radio turned turn on, on the components mm -hmm. as I kid you not Yendi, as I touch, the button. I just said, yeah, well, this youth, you know, I don't have a deep voice like Muta. He was like, you have a song where, yeah, just listen. <laughs> he yeah. said, like, he's trying to say something, but just listen. And he played it. And I was like, yo. I had nobody to call. It was near 12 o'clock. There's no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram, nothing. no TikTok, no nothing to say. Look at it. Like, everybody, look. My boss. My mom's sleeping, my brother's sleeping, <laughs> and I was supposed to be doing homework. And I'm like, yo, I'm jumping up and down. So 
No one. I'm sorry. Can I have a demonstration? You were doing what? Sorry. I just <laughs> <laughs> one foot scan. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. And it was just a feeling that I've never felt before. Like actually hearing it back when you know that you're not the one that pressed play on it is somebody also, else. It speaks volumes because he. It, <clears throat> Him is a man who is critical upon a level, you know. Yeah. Nothing not impress him. Exactly. So, so. I felt very accomplished. And, yes. And the next day I was like, yo, Jay, like telling my brother, who has been, my brother has been the, even with the demos. Yeah. He has been the person that's, that's been like, yeah, you should do it. He's the person that, not the yes man, but the, the encouraging person. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's never the yes man. He'll tell me <laughs> straight up what's that's up. That's whack. You know what I mean? <laughs> But but he just wanted for other people to hear it, other than me and him in the room. Yeah. Our room was graffiti and all the way. You ever been to, you know, you know uh, what's your name? Uh, Quiz Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you see the wall? That's how our room was. That's Tea Tree Crepery. The Tea Tree Crepery. <laughs> Check it out. Quiz. Yeah. <laughs> but our wall was like that. We used to have posters of like the pop artists, them, Mad. Madonna and these things and, you know, any... Janet Jackson. Hip yeah, hip hop <laughs> artists too. And, and then like just draw graffiti all over the wall and everybody who came yeah. to visit, just go and do it. So my room was like a little piece of, you know, artwork at yes. one point. Yes. Um, you should recreate that in your house now. Yeah. I think Levi is going to do a great <laughs> job of it and Remy soon. <laughs> them find, when they find them crayons, and <laughs> it's over. when they're re old enough to reach that shelf, it's over. <laughs> yeah. So, so he was like, instead of us just having it for ourselves, you should show people. And I, and I showed dad and then I, whatever. So when that happened, when Muta uh, played that, it was like, yo, that's amazing. So uh, both of us very happy and, and you know, went on to to start to uh, Jason started in a sound system called Sage, which it eventually merged with Copper Shot. Mr. Anderson is sitting over there. <laughs> um, uh, Big up Copper and, Shot. And that history was made then. Now from that's from first and second farm. These guys are mm. mixing songs, making tapes, giving to their friends. None of that had my work on it yet because right. mine was just demos. Right. But they, they started to play at Sweet Sixteens. Yes. They started to play at <laughs> barbecues and, you know, weddings and then dances. And, and, and they started to get a real big hype mm -hmm. in their generation and whatnot. And mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're a couple years younger than myself. So that was also inspiring to see. Mm. And then by the time I had one or two songs, it was like, all right, the, the demo songs, they were like, yo, let's do dub plates. So ah, they would have, okay. have locked me up in the bathroom with the mic, <laughs> with, with the Susie phone. <laughs> and you know what I mean? The card going under the, the, the door and screaming on people's houses with these conscious songs and rhythms. Uh, uh, by that time, it was about 94, mm. it's 95. And, and so uh, we start to make an impact. And Rupert Ben invites me to a little place called Carlos Cafe to sing on Friday mm -hmm. night. He's like, come, come DJ, it's an open mic thing. I was like, all right, cool. It was funny though, because everybody that was playing or singing there was like doing Purple Rain. <laughs> and like real accomplished musicians. Like, and Acoustic I'm, vibes. Yeah. And I'm just and like, it's an alarm. This. And everybody's like, who, who is that? <laughs> so, so I did that for like a couple of weeks, six weeks, and I remember ER coming there yeah. uh, to, 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 you know, check out the thing and they put a snippet of me there. And I was like, yo, step to step, you know me, I grew up. Um, from that now, I had a bridging named Zachary Hardy that right. saw me do that. And he was there drinking and socializing and he come to me and said, yo, bro, didn't know you were doing this stuff. My brother has a studio. I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, man, you should come through. And I'm like, all right, let me see what's up. So the next friend of my own now was the, uh, Daniel Abbott, who mm -hmm. Daniel was instrumental in making me really do my first dub plate that was actually played in a party. So he had council, which was a party that was big in them days. It's kind of mm -hmm. like how we have, you know, uh, PP them will keep party now. Right. You understand? Big promoters. Yeah, big promoters. promoters. Yeah, yeah. So they were they were all in high school, but the council was a thing that everybody used to go to. I think I think Bambi was part of the council. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. Um so 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 uh 
you know, all those guys came and said, do a dub plate and killing, sitting the, uh, something like that. I don't remember which other song, <laughs> but we was just to big up, I was to big up them. And they, they were like, come to Jeremy Harden's studio. Went up there, met up with Daddy Gun, met up with Jeremy, just started the whole kind of loop as what turned into Dutty Cup and the first mm -hmm. production from Two Hard Sound. Baby Girl came out, everybody mm. was like, yo, Baby and history girl, was kind of... Baby Girl, don't grind no more. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> history I mean, them that time. song that, you know? <laughs> ah, that was my first tune of, like, when I'm talking to a woman or just about ladies. And what was different about it was that uh, um, I like Terry Ganze as a DJ. Yeah. The name of a, a song said, please, man, she do man yes. right. And I was kind of doing my installment of, like, don't make the man and beat you. Like, let's, right. let's not have that happen. That's right. So um, it was to me still a conscious song, and I was like, yeah. And then, boy, I did that and it just blew up, you know. And then Copper Shot was all in the mix. Renaissance started to get involved, mm. and then Stone Love. And then when it got to the Stone Love level, it was just like everybody in the country was saying, who's this dude? That's right. So. Yeah, that's a long story. Hey there, I know you're really enjoying this episode, but I also know you really like my Odyssey by Yendi shirt. So I'm just saying, be sure to click below in the description box to figure out just how you can get your hands on some Odyssey by Yendi apparel. Yeah? Okay? Okay, bye. It could a long little more. Me no business, <laughs> me love it. You know why I love it? Because people see the success now. Yeah. And they often forget how far the journey is coming from. They often forget, say, like, when you go and tell me now, make sure that nobody never knows, say, go, whip, go nap on um, Muta bookstore front. <laughs> Let me in. Yeah. Make sure people don't know that. Or as, a, yeah. as, a, as to readily pull on that. And I think that's amazing. Like, I'm just like, yo, who, who do I mean for nap on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but... It works. It works. It works. But, right, so here's my thing now. We know that level. We know... Dotty Cup is happening, but Sean, you have what you've done for yourself is beyond what many have done, and in fact, I would dare say you've done what no one has done. The types of collaborations you've done are huge. Mm -hmm. The markets you've tapped into the Latin market, the European yeah. market, the name it, but and also you've carried dance hall everywhere like authentic real raw dance hall too i mean i don't even know what my question is at this point i'm just like oh hey <laughs> oh hey no, thank I'm kidding. you for the accolade <laughs> honestly though i mean i've taken I, i've taken these steps with dance hall because it took me here yes you know what i mean I, I don't say i'm the be all and end all of dance hall i was the fly on the wall i saw these great yes. artists doing them thing um you know, and I, I kind of learned that, yo, you have to do it in one take. At that time, that's, that's what it was. Right. And you had to know your song. So if you're a billionaire of lyrics, it wasn't like, oh, uh, let's stop and let me start back like how we all do nowadays. Right. It was like real hardcore, straight thing. I can remember the first time I did a dub at Arrows and I messed up. I was I like, yeah, big up here. And I start the song, you know, as I start the song, it's like in three, like third line, I'm like, yeah. And everybody like, Phew. Look for me, Rex. Bro, what you do? <laughs> All right, scratch off that part of the plate because that, that rendered that part of the plate uh, like damaged. Yeah, can I use it? So they scratch it and then start, yo, don't mess up, you know. I'm like, all right, bro, all right. And I'm being paid, so I had to be like, you know. <laughs> um, it was it was a little pressure. Yeah. But then, as I said, I got, I got used to it and learned quickly yeah. after doing that. And dance art took me, you know, to so much places when there was times where, you know, I had breakups and heartbreaks yeah. and these type of things. I would lean up on the music yeah. and and um, it it was it, it's been you know it's been my side chick then mm. <laughs> so yeah. to speak. The music it's been it's yeah. been something to help me out and um, you know rely on. So so when I'm going all over the world, I've never forgot that. Ask Sean Anderson sitting right there, Kappa Sean. Mm -hmm. What is on the front of his console every day? And no matter how small the crowd. Or big the crowd is, a Jamaican flag. Yes. That's not because we want to be associated with the great brand of Jamaica just because, but it, it, is, it is because we want to fly that flag. That's right. You That's know, right. I was a swimmer for Jamaica back when I was a kid. I went to places like Orlando, Mexico, uh, Barbados, Bahamas, um, 
um, Trinidad, Curacao, Puerto Rico, all to represent my country. Right. Um, two bronze medals in Carifta, by the way. So. Okay, right. now. Oh, <laughs> hardware. <laughs> hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But fun yeah. and joke aside, what you're doing now is an extension of that. And it's obvious that representing Jamaica means a lot to you. It yeah, matters man. to you. It, I mean, to me, I've seen the greatest things here and the worst. I've yeah. seen the biggest things and the smallest. I've seen yeah. the fastest and the slowest things. And, and I'm somebody who always tries to pay attention to the more positive sides of things. Yeah. So I've always wanted to show people, yeah, look, there's so much great things here. Yeah. Um, so given the opportunity now where, you know, at first it was just for me, like, yo, I have one little song. I want people to hear more. I, I want to do more songs. After a while, for me, it's like, I want people to know the mm. rest of what's happening. That's right. I've always called the latest hottest artists in Jamaica's names in my interviews yes. uh, abroad. Um, so you mean you're always um, talking about yourself? That's what you're telling me right now? Yeah. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But there's other hot artists as well, you know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah, I've been giving accolades to people and, and trying to... Definitely. Trying to support what they do as well Definitely. over the years for the longest time till yeah. I decided, yo, why not go full circle and try the producing thing you used to want to be? Yeah. Um, did the, f the first album I had one track on there because I, I, that I produced myself. Mm -hmm. I bought a drum machine and Jeremy teach some things and Dan Carleone teach me some things and <laughs> yeah, just like that. Just hit where you feel and yeah. you, that's, that's good. Sound it out. Yeah, man. And uh, same time, Kappa Shot and my brother is starting their, their studio and producing as well and we're kind of moving strength to strength like, in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the big blow up and the international success and all of that. Uh, it was important for me to, to represent who put me on, mm -hmm. Kappa Shot. So, Sean, not just because he did that back in the day for me as voice dubs and put him on, but he's an excellent DJ right. um, and, and, and producer at this point. So, yeah. you know, we, we've been moving from them time there and it's, it's felt like family and it's felt like... Um, you know, a brotherhood, and, and, and that's why I would never, ever be out in, 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 in the international waters and forget mm -hmm. my own country. Because no. of people like that around me, my brother, Sean, you know, my family is pretty grounded me as well. So mm -hmm. I'm a grounded person because of the people around me. You really are. You really are. Um, as a matter of fact, in, as I was listening to you talk a while ago, I don't even know if you would remember this, but years ago, when I was a young warthog, <laughs> I'm kidding. You mean no. like, like last month? <laughs> <laughs> well, then. <laughs> but I used to, when I used to do my summer camp, yeah. it was like back in 08, 09, mm. somewhere there. And when I had the um, summer camp for kids, every Friday when I had a mentorship program, and I remember I was like, Sean, can you come talk to my kids? Just come mm. and give my kids a vibe. I don't even know if you remember that. I do. And you were like, no problem. <laughs> and you came and sat down and spoke to a hundred kids who were like this big and then this big, and you're just like, yo, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> I try. And um, it's never, I've never forgot that. I've never forgot that because this is after you don't already have collaborations with Beyonce and Keisha yeah. Cole and I mean, name them, you know? And it's never been lost on me that you've never lost your grounding. I love no. that about you, actually. Can't do that. Thank yeah. you. I can't do that. And, and I think that we've had a lot of brain drain in our country. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know enough friends that, that they, they went to school abroad and then they're like, you know, great lawyers or doctors or something. And then they, their life starts to, you know, Pull them evolve away. and yeah. they, 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 they leave. Yeah. They're, not, they're not here. So I, I've always even encouraged people who are new to, to just be great people. Yes. To just like, yo, they're like, when I hear them complaining about the problems that are here, I'm like, when you do take the trip abroad, let's try to remember the good things that were here versus what's there. Yes. Because their good things ain't as good as our good things. Our Maybe our bad things are worse than theirs at times, but our good things. And I'm always yeah. a person that, that, that tries to look at the positive side. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I encourage people to to, to try come back. Mm, you know? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. You have to. I don't care. You can't tell me that you don't have an answer. You have to have an answer. Okay. okay. Let's just start there. You. What's your favorite collab that you've done? Oh boy, <laughs> that's a hard one. That's a hard one. I I don't have a favorite collab. I don't. I really. Uh, I can say. 
I can mention two. Yes, give me a top three then. Okay, top three. I would say Rihanna because she came here to Jamaica. Yeah. Most collabs I do, I either travel abroad or I do, I do like, uh, you know, over the internet. Yeah. We do that. Um, but she was like, I met her on tour and she was like, yeah, I, I want to come to Jamaica. And I can't do a, <laughs> a Bayesian accent. I was about to be like, who was that? I can't do a Bayesian accent good. Uh, similar to my Muta accent, not very, my Muta impersonation, not very good. <laughs> but yeah, I want to come to Jamaica and I love Jamaica. Most people love Africa and I want, like, Jamaica is a big place to me. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. So i like, well then forward. And then one day she pick up the phone and say, I'm coming for Christmas. I'm like, whoa. So the first place we take her go is Bob Marley Museum. Yeah. And she was just like in awe, oh, just sitting there like, this is where the man used to die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we ate food around there and then we got and beach. She love her Bob, you know? We got club. She mm -hmm. love Bob. We love her Bob, yeah. We got beach, we got club, we got, um, you know, studio. And I, there was no real talk of doing a song. It was just like, I wanted to show her the place. Yeah. And then we ended up doing a song that went to number seven on the Billboard charts without no big company pushing it. Yeah. That just goes to show how two little artists from the Caribbean, and she hadn't done Umbrella at the time. That's right. Yet. She never blew yet. Yeah, so, so, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and two little artists from Jamaica at that time, up from the Caribbean at No, man, time. remember Jamaica claimer. You can't <laughs> say it. From Jamaica. <laughs> but yeah, from our region, uh, blew up the world. I yeah. mean... It was number seven or nine on the playlist. That means that it was playing quite a few times mm -hmm. a day on people's stations mm -hmm. where they just thought that, yo, this is big. And then she did Umbrella and blew up differently. Right. But uh, I was just happy to be involved with, with getting her on the radio in that respect and mm -hmm. also showing somebody who was very popular at the time too how we do it in Jamaica. Right. Because I didn't, I, haven't got, I didn't get the opportunity up until that point. There's been other artists that have come now and I've been able to show them the same right. thing. This is pan chicken. You know <laughs> what I mean? Try it. <laughs> Don't uh, use a fork. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Use your hands. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, but, you know, those, those type of things. You know, when you hungry and you come from a club and you're like, what's tonight? Okay, pan chicken. Oh, soak that up. Soak up all the Use the, the bread. Yeah. Dab up the pepper and the exactly. ketchup. Exactly. You dad. know the thing. So, yeah. and, and, <laughs> It's delicious. So, <laughs> so um, things like that is part of the positive yeah. that I like to yeah. show people. They're like, whoa, this is dope. Yeah. So Rihanna is one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one is Clean Bandits. Reason being, yeah. because my mom was a single mom. And when they mm -hmm. came at me with the song, I didn't even think of doing a song like that. So it kind of opened my, my, my perspective on songs, you know, about ladies. Yes. Um, and I was kind of ashamed. I was like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Single moms are you doing okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the next one. And uh, because of them wanting t me on the track, but also producing dancehall, yes. to me, that was, that was a special thing. Because even though people might say, you know, it's poppy and it's watered down, um, at the same point in time, when you look at like hip hop music, when it was blowing up outside of the Bronx and going to the West Coast and the South Coast and France and London and Germany and mm -hmm. other people producing it now, they add something to the sound right. and take it to the, in yes. their direction that yes. way. And so, uh, you know, I've felt for a long time that some our our productions and especially during those years, we needed to compete with what's happening internationally. Right. And these were people that were willing to do that with me and. It was a very dope song. Yeah. It didn't actually reach number one everywhere, but uh, like the Sia did. Yes. But it was special to me because of the sentiment in the song. Ah, oh, I love yeah. that. I actually yeah. really love that. I yeah. love that song then. Yeah. I actually love all of them, to be honest with you. Thank you. I am going to ask you, <laughs> by the way, every time you do that, I think I'm going to start saying thank you like that from now on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sean Paul voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's really an Elvis voice, isn't it? Thank you. You can go deep. <laughs> Yeah, of course I can. Just not Muta deep. <laughs> no, not not like yeah. Muta is deep and raspy and. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got it. So tell me <laughs> if you were to select your top top moment of your career so far. That this moment that you're just like, wow, I still can't even believe that's real. What would that be? Winning the American Music Award. Yeah. Because that was nuts. I, I'd never, I, I never thought that would happen. I've never seen 
anybody from the Caribbean actually even, or I don't remember right. us being nominated or winning that award. Um, it was for best pop male vocalist, beat Justin Timberlake and Kanye West. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of crazy. I mean, so, yeah, uh, I had to wash my face right after I came out for that stage. Cause you were crying? No, just in shock. Oh. And I, it was cold water in the pipe, and I was like, psh, 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 psh. <laughs> "You this bro?" Looking in the mirror, like. No, but uh, when you think about all of what you just shared, you're just like, "Yo, yeah, this is where we are." That yeah, because it, it, it's it's I'd be a whirlwind, you know. Back in '96, when people start calling for dub plates and for shows and barbecue, and it's like, "Yo, yo, yo." You start, you start not notice, noticing the time passing, especially yes. you start going on tour now. Yeah. You know, the only way I was coming back uh, to see my brethren's kids growing up. And I'm right. like, yo, time That's is That's what you realize. The time. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if so, any of you realize what Sean just mentioned, barbecue year. If you don't know about high school barbecue, you don't live no sort of life in a Jamaica. I mean, I said that real, straight. Real, real, real. Uh, barbecue was the, yo, yeah, barbecue. The real thing. <laughs> it was the lick. Come on, that was, a, that was a, that's how... You start socializing as a youngster. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If there is anything that you could do differently on your path thus far, is there anything? Uh, no. Nothing. You can't change your life. Yes. You know what I mean? I must be proud of every step. For instance, the song on the album that I just did called Live and Living, there's a song called Spaceship on there mm. with Suku Ward. Yeah. And uh, we tried to find, uh, actually, that dude right there, Mr. Anderson, Sean Anderson, found a sample that we used. Yeah. But I had to call this artist because this artist is now a Christian artist. Right. So I had to say, Sasha, what go on? Yeah. And she said the same thing to me. She's like, she heard the song. She's like, yo, this is dope. And she's like, that's my first song ever, Sean. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes feel that people don't remember it or don't notice it. And you know what? I'm not afraid of, I'm not ashamed of any step or anything that happened to me in my life because I am now who I am and you, we can only live in the present so when we are ashamed of the past it kind of makes no sense you have to move on and she was like yo use the, use the sample I love it you have my you have my permission I'm a, I'm a what's that word you have my go ahead, go ahead. yeah yeah and and, um, and and it's the same thing yeah the approval and that's the same thing that how I feel about my history, there was times where people said in the country, oh, him can't perform. I, 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 you know, I, I, to me, it was always like, yo, I live and I learn. That's right. So I'm going to go up on that stage and face the fire. I don't, every time. And I don't care what people think. I know that just like me telling my nephew and my son right now, the more you shoot the basketball, is the more you're going to get better. Come, let's do it. And, and the probability and, increases yeah. it can go in. Exactly. I so. Heard. So yeah, I'm not ashamed, I wouldn't change nothing. Uh, and you grow from strength to strength. You learn every day. You learn from kids. You learn from elders. Yeah. You know? By the way, who can Willie bounce like Sean Paul now? <laughs> talk to me good. Because me, I tell Whoa. you, say, when Sean go for Willie, talk truth. <laughs> Yo! I feel like that's the, the first thing. move that you got really comfortable with and you were like, watch me perform in this. I want to tell you. <laughs> so, when, when I, back in the 90s, for like 94, before uh, I became an artist or was a popular artist, I used to do that like a running man, basketball dance, yeah. rough dance. Uh, but I have, a, I have a knee injury. Ah. And that happened when I was in school playing football, soccer, mm -hmm. football. And kind of broke my knee, turned sideways and a bag of oh, something. Wow. And um, it was a long road to recovery. Yeah. So when I first started to perform, I was really stiff on stage especially because of that knee. If there's anybody who has had, uh, it's an excuse. <laughs> no, no. no but if I hope you feel bad about yourself now. <laughs> yeah, you, you used to be like, that ain't stiffy. The man couldn't help but stiff. But if you've ever had like a, 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 a joint, yes. especially the ankle or the knee, them or the hip. That yes. You, it's very immobilizing. It, yeah, it is. You know what I mean? So um, that was one of the reasons why I couldn't do you know, thing. Uh, Willie Bunks was kind of like just the top off of you. It wasn't really nothing down yasa no more. So, it's a double up for me. So yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna do this to the to the to the full right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yo, I, was, yeah, I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. Mad. Yeah. I am going to put a <laughs> clock on the screen, and I'm gonna ask you. Time is on the clock. I actually yeah. want to see how 
well you can give the information and how quickly you can just be like watch me drop this knowledge on you right? All right what are your top three life hacks so these three things are that you are like whether it's career family name what are the top three things that you would say you see when we do these three things in your life mm -hmm. life start out now for your sagicor life hacks let's get our sagicor clock on the timer <laughs> and go yeah Big up Sajikor and the clock. Um, <laughs> um, discipline, eh? Ooh. And, and learning that uh, life is about up and down. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the down, you have to know, say, the up's coming. The up is coming, it's like a wave. A word, Sean. The up is coming. So, so while you're in the valley, just keep looking up or just remember the times you was on that, but that's how life is, it's ebb and flow. And the last one now, um, it, it, it pertains to doing art, mm -hmm. when art is, it, art is about reflecting life, mm -hmm. so it must take place naturally. Yes. Don't try, force it, and I used to force it like write down my lyrics in the book until mm -hmm. I sang a song called Give Me The Light, mm -hmm. and I was a freestyle type of vibes where I was just trying to get 800 bucks. <laughs> and so I just went with what was on the top of my head. Once the, what is on the top of your head, is is positive and is not trying to take energy from nobody yes go with it and clock well yeah. done and that's good <laughs> yeah oh that's really like good mm, you like those? i yeah. do discipline Hope. is actually one that i must admit that it's an area i need to work on even more and i don't know how i can even say that because i think i'm very disciplined but yeah. like but it's discipline in many different like i'm not disciplined in keeping my car clean if you come out there and look at that <laughs> You'll be like, what kind of car you are drive around? Zine. But I'm disciplined in, you know, in, in, in doing the work that I need to do. Yes. I'm disciplined in the rehearsals I need to do with the band or with the DJ. I'm disciplined in, you know, being on time and you are, interviewing and those yes. type of things. Yeah. yeah. How has fatherhood changed you? Uh, it, it, it's, it's made me more thoughtful of what's right and wrong. Because as, as you grow up, sometimes you're like, there's so much things that's wrong around you and you know, you know you're not into that, but you kind of go, all right, I'm not into that. And so I walk on this path, I lo love those alone. Right. Well, no, I have to tell my son because he's doing things sometimes, even just saying things in front of people. Like, Yo, you can't say that to yes. people. You can't tell, you can't uh, be rude like that. So, or, 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 or you need to have manners. So, so them type of thing that is getting me to kind of think about right and wrong a lot more mm. and actually put it into songs like Guns and Navarone because yes. uh, that, that, that and, and, and many other songs that I have that I kind of bring in to the forefront so yeah. at first I was like I don't change me I'm, you know, I'm the same dude and yes I am but I've expanded yes. my, my thought process it's not changed totally it's expanded to, to, to think more of other people and to try and uh, help a younger generation Try to see a little light in certain dark areas. Ooh, you know love what I mean? that. I like how your shirt says God is love. That is true. Thank you. Do you know what this shirt is? No. This is an Odyssey by Yendi shirt. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Pretty Do you dope. know what I actually um, have right here for you in this box? You have an Odyssey for Sean Paul? Yes! What? <laughs> <laughs> Big up. But yeah, That's you're dope. welcome. It's just to say thank you for sitting down that. with me, chatting with me. It's been such a nice vibe. Thank you. Oh. The Odyssey was my mixtape in 2009. Yo! Mad something. That's it. That's Mad it. Mad something is a connection. That's it. Mad something. But you know, say so you're my dupes a long time. I shall wear with pride, ma'am. And, and you're my dupes. Is that what you can say, dupes? You know what? We're saying it today. Du, du, dupes. 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 Right. I'm trying you to heard say that. princess with the dupe inside it. It's the oh. dupes. Dupes up in hey. this. You understand me? Because SP says so. Yo, we're a Caraga studio, you know? Thank you so Mad much. Luck. I adore and appreciate you. And thank you for what you do. Thank you thank what you, you do for Jamaica. Thank you what you do for Brand Jamaica, for the sound. You appreciate are the realest. Hey, thank you. Baddest. Bestest. <laughs> do best. A joke. <laughs> <laughs> Mad. Thanks, SP. Thank you. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys was brought to you in partnership with Sagicor and MasterCard.